Hey guys and welcome to today's video where I'll guide you through step by step how to build a bioactive tank. Now it's great to see that so many people are embracing natural tanks but understandably the thought of building one can be a little daunting so I'm hoping this video will help hopefully it'll be a good base for you to go on and build some incredible tanks. Now though I will be referencing my arboreal tanks a lot in this video these steps can be applied to a range of tank builds including a leopard gecko tank and even a dart frog tank. I do have a playlist where you can see all my tank builds in full which I'll link below but yeah let's start off the first step. So number one I usually start off by building a background. Um, enjoy this cartoon I, I made it, get it gets worse. <laughs> so personally I do this but I use driftwood, branches, cork to just build up the background and then I secure them in place with expanding foam. Now I use touch and foam landscape as it's safe for plants and animals, it's black, it isn't affected by sunlight when I use like UV um, and it's really strong. Now granted it can be very expensive and I usually need to buy two cans when I'm building the size tanks that I'm building um, but it's really good stuff. Now I will say I have seen cheaper versions in America, I think Josh's Frog sells some, although I don't think it's black, I think it's like a yellowy colour, but there are many other options out there. Now from this part I go on to carve the background, add sealant which I get from Amazon, it's safe for animals and it's really cheap, and then I sprinkle on Eco Earth. Of course if you want to keep things simple you can buy pre-made backgrounds, some are like cork flats, some are foam, some are like proper 3D. The only downside I guess is you would have to attach branches and stuff coming out of it separately like you might secure them in place with maybe expanding foam or something else um so you can't have that sort of natural look of it coming out of the background like you do when you build it with foam but that's up to you and i'm sure there's a way around all of that now once you've done the background the next step is to make a drainage layer also known as a false bottom this will prevent the tank becoming waterlogged, which you really definitely don't want, otherwise the plants will probably die. So step number two, add a drainage layer. Personally, I use Hydro Balls by Zoomed. Once again, for my size tank, so say 45 by 45 by 60 centimetres, I'm probably looking at buying two bags of Hydro Balls. There are many other options out there, this is just what I use. On top of the drainage layer, you'll need something to prevent the substrate mixing with the hydro balls. So step number three is add in a substrate barrier. Now there's lots out there. Personally, I used a Lucky Reptile Hydro Fleece and this worked well for a while, but recently I found when it got too wet, it sort of collapsed, but then it has been in there for a very long time. So I would say like look for yourself, look at the reviews, see what people have used and worked well and also what kind of environment you're trying to create because I'd say if you are trying to create maybe one for frogs that has to be wet all the time, maybe the hydro fleece isn't ideal. Step number four, substrate. Now this is usually where things can go wrong. The thing with substrate is you need a decent one that supports plant growth but is also safe for reptiles and amphibians. So it shouldn't contain fertilizers like in the substrates you might get from a garden center as these can be toxic to your pets. So ideally you wanna be looking out for reptile and amphibian safe substrates. Personally, I use Arcadia's Earth Mix and it has served me well for a very long time. Uh, if I need to top it up, I just use the Earth Pro Bio Revitalizer that they have. It's all good. But as I said, there are lots of different options out there. I know like Josh's Frogs and the Bio Dude in the US, for example. I've heard their substrates are really good as well, so feel free to look into those. Uh, one thing you should avoid though is when choosing a substrate, don't go with cocoa fibre, so like Eco Earth and other similar products for example. This is because cocoa fibre will not support plant growth. I use some right in the back of Drogo's tank, wet, very shaded where nothing would probably ever grow, just to build up an area. So of course you can build up areas with Eco Earth, but it won't support plant growth. Now the substrates used for these tanks can be a little expensive, but once you have everything going in here and everything's flowing in its little ecosystem, you probably won't need to replace it for a very, very long time. Step number five is to add in some decor. Now these last few steps you can kind of do in a different order, whichever you prefer. So for example, in my leopard gecko tanks, though I will say right up now, as you're looking at them, um, they're not bioactive tanks properly. They don't have a proper drainage layer. If I were to do it again in the future I would definitely give them a drainage layer. This is why all the plants probably died. Um, 
But what I like to do is put in the rocks, figure out where everything's going, and sometimes add substrate afterwards. Whereas in a crusty tank, I might put in the substrate and then add decor as I go. So whatever you do, just make sure it's in there securely. It won't drop on your animals. It will support their weight and everything. And there's lots of places for them to explore. Now step number six is to add in plants. I will leave a link below to save plants that are meant to be safe for reptiles and amphibians. Um, I think they're more suited to the humid kind of tanks. When it comes to leopard geckos, I believe succulents and arid grass and things like that are meant to be better for their tanks. I haven't looked into it too much, so you might have to do your separate research, but yes. And if you have a reptile that is liable to eat the plants, really look into what you're going to put in there because you don't want them eating something toxic. Step number seven is to add in like moss and leaves and all those little things that help the humidity stay sort of high. Also, they support your cleanup crew in the future. So if you have an arid tank, I haven't tried this personally, but I have heard that it's good to have a area where the cleanup crew can go, they can escape from the gecko, but it's also a little extra humid so they can actually survive. So as I haven't tried that myself, I will mainly be referencing what I've done in my crusty chihuahua tanks, but basically I usually mix up some of the moss in the soil, sometimes I leave it on top. I have also recently started using leaves, they will break down over time, they'll create a more fertile area so the plants will flourish, but not only that, they will create a barrier between your gecko or whatever animal you have, and the cleanup crew. So if you think your animal will go ahead and eat its cleanup crew, try to use leaves so they can at least escape. Step number eight, of course, you need a growth light. So for me, I use the Arcadia Jungle Dawn. I have had this for absolutely ages. You don't have to replace it like you do with a UV light. It's definitely worth the money. But once again, there's lots and lots of different options out there. The ones that I would probably say to avoid are the ones with red and blue chips, just because this is really old, outdated technology that not only isn't very effective, but also usually leaves your tank looking an odd purple colour. So try to avoid those. Now, step nine is, of course, add in your animal. But ideally, I would say to wait a little while between planting your tank and adding in your animal just because you want your plants to get established. You know, some can die of transplant shock. Some just don't do well in terrarium environments. So... Ideally, wait a little while before you add an animal. If I'm going to be honest, I've pretty much always planted a tank and then be like, move in, you can move in. I think apart from my chihuahua, because I think I had the tanks up before I got him. But ideally, just leave your plants to settle in before putting in your animal. And the final step, once again, you want to wait a little while before you do this. But step number 10 is to add in the cleanup crew. So you can use worms, isopods, springtails for example and ideally you want to add them a little while after your animal has moved in so there's already some sort of animal poop they can break down and hopefully they'll avoid attacking plants. There's also other things they can feed on. Um, I use custodian fuel for example. Sometimes now I'll pop in dead crickets. If you see my recent video on my isopods they're now eating the crickets. Um, there's a range of things you can give them. Also when a terrarium sort of starting off you may notice a bit of like mold and fluff occurring in the tank and that's fine because normally the cleanup crew will literally just get rid of it they eat it all also you may even notice you'll get a few tiny mushrooms that just occur once again the isopods will destroy them so I hope this video has helped. As I said at the beginning, it's really just a basic guide which I hope will help get you started and inspire you to build some amazing natural tanks. If you haven't already, please subscribe. But thank you for watching guys and goodbye.